thousands of farmers raise livestock on grasslands throughout Virginia. These grasslands have the potential to be very productive, but it largely depends on how the livestock are managed on the pastures. When my partner and I started using a rotational grazing system 20, 25 years ago, we quickly realized the cow was a more efficient harvester than equipment was. And any time a cow can eat what she needs during the day grazing, it's a huge savings over what it takes to make the feed. With rotational grazing, particularly winter grazing, if you can graze year-round, you're dramatically going to reduce your feed costs and improve performance. The, the amount of grass you have to, to graze is just a, a, a tremendous difference. We have significant profits, we have optimum production, and at the same time we're doing our part to protect the environment and the water system. More and more farmers are transitioning from continuous grazing their livestock to a higher level of grazing management. Their goal is to save time and money by grazing their livestock more days throughout the year and therefore having to feed less hay to overwinter their herd. So watch and listen over the next few minutes as these Virginia grazers explain how they're truly gaining ground. What we used to do is just take the, the whole 40 acres and put a 25, 30, 40 head of cattle on it, and they just eat until they, uh, there's nothing there, and then first thing you know, they're pulling up the roots. But that's the way majority farmers, we all did that. But now, since we have uh, you know, increased our uh, rotational grazing in our fields and upgraded, and on this farm right now, we have approximately uh, 60 head of cattle right here now, where we used to run 25. On this farm, we've got uh, 22 permanent paddocks. Uh, we run about 100 to 120 cows a year. Uh, we make hardly any hay here. Most of it's all grazed. Uh, we attempt to stockpile fescue to graze in the wintertime, and we try to have these cows eating grass at least 300 to 320 days out of the year. Minimize hay feeding as much as possible. We started in the cattle business in around 1994 with about 30 cows on 100 acres. We've since grown to approximately 300 cow-calf pairs on 900 acres, and we've done that pretty much solely based upon year-round rotational grazing systems. And for us, that's probably the most economic, sustainable type of farming that we can think of. This mountain farm has been neglected for 50 years when I bought it, and I've been working for the last 30 to improve the, uh, the forage capability. And uh, before, on a hilly farm like this, cattle would tend to graze in some particular areas, and uh, they'd overgraze one area and undergraze another. And with the rotational grazing, I can control where they're grazing in and prevent that from happening. I think my carrying capacity is approximately double since I went to the uh, intensive grazing and the forage base is, is greatly improved. I can tell a tremendous difference. Year-round rotational grazing is much more economical to us because we have less hay feeding, less hay costs, and we have less fertilizer costs because we recycle nutrients more efficiently. Things that make it more efficient is that when the cow is grazing it, she returns 70% of what she consumes back to the soil. If you harvest it for hay, you're removing huge quantities of nutrients that you have to then carry back as fertilizer. The other thing it saves on is the fuel and just the cost of running the equipment. Not even talking about the labor it takes to, uh, to roll up all that hay, both to, to harvest it and then to store it and then to take it out of storage and haul it back to her. By letting her graze the grass year round, it's just a whole lot more efficient system. None of this clover was overseeded. It came up naturally with good grazing management. Plus, with nitrogen prices now running about 70 cents a pound, we're probably putting 80 to 100 pounds of nitrogen back in the soil for free. When you've got a good sod and, 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 and it's there, and it holds down and keeps down erosion, you, you're definitely yeah, made, a, made some advancement. Once a farmer adopts a rotational grazing management or management intensive grazing, certain changes take place in the system over time. And often those changes start on the surface, but quickly move to beneath the surface. You get much more root mass, which just pumps the carbon or the organic matter into the soil, 
which turns the soil into the sponge. With rotational grazing, I think we're actually gaining ground. Uh, we've gone from about two and two to three percent organic matter up to possibly five percent organic matter. Uh, this allows us to retain nutrients more. We have better nutrient exchange capacity. We also have more water retention and holding capacity, which helps the plant and the soil through times of drought. When you have a thunderstorm, the, the response you get to those, for those pastures that have had this rest period, this 40-day rest period with the debris that's on the surface is huge. And that's the first thing that most guys recognize when they start rotationally grazing is how quickly the grass can recover after even a half inch of rain when it's been dry, dry for a month. It's difficult to realize the difference in rainfall runoff between a continuously grazed pasture versus a rotationally grazed pasture. To really see the difference, you actually have to be out there during the heaviest thunderstorm of the year. NRCS uses a rainfall simulator to demonstrate the effects of infiltration versus runoff on pasture surfaces. These pasture samples were collected from actual pastures just down the road from each other. One represents continuous overstocked and overgrazed pasture. The other represents a rotationally grazed and rested pasture. All rainfall runoff is funneled into a collection jug on the front of the demonstration table. This allows us to visually compare both the volume and clarity of the runoff. The most important nutrient we have to manage is water. Uh, with rotational grazing, particularly during the summer, we have more water infiltration because we have a better cover on the ground. Essentially, the cover intercepts the water particle and allows it to enter into the ground versus running off. By the end of the demonstration, it's amazing to see how much more runoff occurs on the continuous overgrazed pasture versus the well-rested, rotationally grazed pasture. Here you can see how much more water actually soaks in and absorbed under the rotationally grazed, well-rested pasture, and how much more water actually runs off the continuous grazed pasture. When it gets really dry and you get a big rainfall event, how do you want your pastures to perform when your forages need every drop? I've increased my carrying capacity by about 50% since I have, have moved to uh, rotational intensive grazing and um, I'm very pleased with it. Uh, I've noticed an improvement with the animal production and, and also the uh, forage production. When we first had this place, it was 35 acres here in one field. And in the wintertime, you were lucky to get two to three weeks of stockpile grazing out of it. Once we broke it into four paddocks, we can almost four times that, uh, just because you can, you're not wasting as much. Well, on the bottom line, it's, it's, it is more than doubled my, what you say, my grazing capacity. And I, I wouldn't care to say if it hadn't tripled it. Listen closely as these farmers explain the key principles of grazing management that they use to make their system work. Some of the most important include controlling the animal, grazing height, rest period, and stocking rate. When you start into a rotational grazing system, the easiest part is putting in the fences and the waterers. Uh, once you've got that and you've got your paddock set up, then you have to commit to several things. One is you do have to rotate them on a, a regular basis. Uh, and usually you need to start somewhere around at least once every seven days. I just use um, a single strand of high tensile wire to separate the paddocks. And um, I've got uh, six watering troughs on these paddocks so that I can water the animals as they go from one area to the other. Once the cattle become uh, used to the system, they move very quickly and very easily. And then the other thing, you have to commit to taking them off once they get grazed down to about a three inch height, just to maintain the leaf area. After the cows get used to rotational grazing, they'll pretty much tell you when they need to move. The other thing you have to commit to is you have to give all those pastures adequate rest between defoliations. So the total time between when they graze the pasture and when they go back to that same pasture needs to be in excess of 30 days and better 40 to 45 days. 
The rest period should be enough to allow that the plant to recover and get uh, some carbohydrates back down to the root system because continuous grazing will essentially uh, deplete the nutrition in the plant, weaken the plant. Sufficient rest periods between grazing events is essential to plant growth and recovery both above the ground surface as well as below the ground, but we normally can't see the root systems in a pasture. That's why NRCS uses these root viewing boxes. Here we've got two different pasture simulations. On the right, we've got an overgrazed, continuously grazed sod. And you can see the root system right here. It just goes partially way down. There's not much to it. On your left, we got this. It simulates a rotationally grazed, well-rested sod. And in that, you can see the expansive and vigorous root system. It actually goes all the way to the bottom of this display. We can see how continuous grazing below that three inch height has devastating effects to the root system. Overall, it weakens the plants and results in thin pastures. And then your stocking rate is really critical. If you try to run more cows than your system can support, all the fences in the world aren't gonna give you more grass. You've gotta uh, equalize the amount of acreage you have with the number of cows that you wanna raise. And somewhere to start is probably three acres to one cow-calf pair. That's kind of the starting point. If you overgraze, you're going to start back. You're going backwards instead of forwards. You're not accomplishing nothing. You're losing ground, you might say. But if you'll take a good rotational graze, and you'll, you'll get them off, graze it back so much, and get them off and let that grass rest and reestablish, it will just keep, keep it coming. And the best thing I've done is the, is the rotational grazing. I've got a much better forage base now since I've done that than I had before. The thing that's the most enjoyable is that you manage the cattle. The disposition of the cow herd is a lot better because you're constantly with them, working with them, and they get used to you being there. So the cattle, cattle handle a lot better. Uh, you get to spend more time with your family. You, you need to spend less time actually managing the system versus a conventional type of system. I think if after people do it, the thing that they realize is they wish they had more paddocks, more waterers, and more gaps, because the, the more you do, the easier it is to manage the cows. It's just a great tool that where I can take this practices and, and put it to use on my farm and get and have a good results. The other thing, as you do it, you realize that you're having a real positive impact on the environment, because now you're controlling erosion, uh, you're keeping them out of creeks and ponds, so you're improving the water quality. And so that makes you feel better because your management's actually resorting and resulting in something that's uh, environmentally sound. And if you do get some setbacks or challenges, view them as learning experiences, you don't have to be perfect to make this thing work. The knowledge of better grazing management is available. The technology and products for implementing a grazing system are better than they've ever been before. Take the next step today. Get to know the experienced grazers in your local community tap into the knowledge and resources available to you and begin to develop a grazing system for your farm.